Okay, so today I want to talk about some Photoshop awesomeness that really focuses around understanding layers. So that's kind of for the new person, to, uh, the person who's new to Photoshop. But if you already know what layers are and how they work within Photoshop, still stick around because we're going to do this really cool um, kind of trick within photography that allows you to basically create and render a scene um, that has multiple characters in it, but all played by the same actor. Um, and it, it kind of plays and dovetails nicely into um, the tutorial about, um, about layers. So with that, let's go ahead and jump straight into it. And what you see on the screen right now is a, um, a sketched version, um, essentially, of um, a scene from, from one of my favorite scenes, really, from um, the movie Reservoir Dogs. And if you're not familiar with it, then um, check it out. It's very good. And if you are familiar with it, you, you, you re probably recall this scene. So on the left, you have Harvey Keitel uh, pointing his uh, 45 ACP down at Steve Buscemi, who's doing the same, um, pointing back up at him. And what we're going to do is we're going to recreate a cheap version of this, um, but using the same actor, me, um, for both roles. And this is basically what it's going to look like. So I'm going to pan out a little bit here to give you an idea of what we're talking about. So this is basically what we're going to create. So obviously I'm not in, in costume, and, and, and this is just kind of a quick job that I did. Um, but... As you can see, um, both characters are look appear to be in the exact same shot. Um, the shadowing is right. The um, depth of field is good. Um, all you know, the the dimensional space and everything looks um, proportionate and correct and all that kind of stuff. And the truth is, because it is. And what this basically is is two photographs fused together, um, pulling in the actor from one photograph into the other. So let's go ahead and jump right in and let me show you how to create this type of scene. And and again, once you kind of figure out how to do this, this is something you can do. You can apply your own creativity to it. You can come up with your own kind of scene that you want to do. Maybe you want um, to box yourself or you want to be every player on the baseball field and you know, whatever. You, you can set up the scene however you want. Um, but let me show you how I did it. So I'm going to switch um, tabs here. These are my Photoshop tabs up here and I have two uh, photographs open. These are the two that I use for the shot. And you can see as I switch back and forth um, the different um, the different shots. So let me explain um, how I did this. Uh, so first of all, there's three things in particular when you do this kind of shot that you, you're going to want to remember and be aware of. The first is that you're going to need a tripod. And a tr what a tripod is going to do is it's going to allow you to take um, an exact kind of shot um, for each character that you're doing in a particular scene. So what you want to do is you want to frame your shot and and then get ready to take it. Um, and second, you want to make sure that your background doesn't have any noise, um, any moving noise in particular. So you don't want any cars or dogs or anything like that going on in the background because what it'll do in the end is it'll really cause you a lot of post-processing work. You, you'll have you'll end up doing a lot of extra work that um, is really not worth doing unless you're being paid for the, for, um, the particular uh, uh, project that you're working on. Um, so if you are, then maybe that works. But if you're not, trust me when I say keep this as simple as possible. This is how you control your settings so that you can get maximized results. Now, thirdly, the third thing is you want to make sure that you shoot your shots within a very short window of time. And the reason why you want to do that is because lighting is so key to these types of shots and lighting changes quickly. Um, so if you you know take a shot at uh, three o'clock and then you take the second shot at 345, the odds are that the light is going to be completely different, shadows will be cast different, and it's basically just going to throw off your um, final product, and you're going to have to, again, end up doing a lot of extra post-processing work that you don't want to do. So take your shots within 5, 10 max minutes of each other, and um, you should get the best results doing that. Okay, so let's jump straight into this. So the first thing that I need to do is I want to take... Um, one of these pictures and basically move it over to the other one so that they're both within the same file. And how I'm going to do that, I'll just start with this one, I guess. And I'm going to say Control A, and that'll select the entire picture. And uh, another way to do this would be to go up to the Select menu and then go down to All, which is um, Control A. And but again, I, I use the short but shortcut um, 
uh, keyboard shortcuts. So I'm just going to do Control A, and then I'm going to do Control C to copy that to my clipboard. And then next, I'm going to move over to the other picture, and I'm going to paste that one that I just copied. I'm going to paste it from my clipboard onto this picture. Now this is where layers come in. So before I actually paste it on, I want to orient your, your um, eyes over here to the layers palette. Now, if you don't have a layers palette over here for some reason, go up to the window menu and come down and select layers. And that should um, display it over here on the right side. So now I'm going to paste in that image. Watch when I do that. I'm going to go control V. And what it does is it pastes that particular image on top of the other one. So photo, in Photoshop, if you think of layers, think of them as if you were to stack two magazines on top of one another. Um, and look, look, and then your point of view would be looking straight down at those magazines, so from a bird's eye point of view. So you have the one on top, and you can obviously visibly see that, but you can't see the one on bottom even though you know it's there. Now, if you were to take some, um, you know, some seriously sharp scissors and cut through that top magazine as you're looking down on it, and I'm going to kind of show you how that might look and work. I'm going to click the eraser tool over here, and I'm on the top layer which, by the way, I'm going to rename to um, um, Lane Down so I know which image that is. So I'm on the top layer. You can see I selected it. Now, again, back to the magazine analogy. If I'm looking straight down at the magazine, the, the one on top I can see. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, cut a big hole in that magazine with my, uh, with my magic scissors. And when I do that, what should happen is the bottom magazine should start to show through because I'm cutting a hole in the top so I can see right through it. So wherever I cut is going to reveal what's b beneath it. And if you look over here in the layers palette, you can see that's exactly what happened. You can see the circle that I cut here and the bottom layer is showing through that circle. So that's essentially, in a nutshell anyway, how layers work. And you just have to always orient your thinking that way when you're working within Photoshop because you'll start to pile layers upon layers upon layers as you do more complicated work. And that's where um, a lot of your creativity will really start to come out and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and control Z to get um, back to my original state before I um, erased everything. And I'm going to show you um, what how this works. So Another thing about layers that you'll probably want to know is um, this little eye icon right here. These are the basically the on and off switch for those layers. So for example, if I, if I click the eye to remove it, it'll basically turn off that layer and reveal whatever's below it. Okay, so you kind of get the idea on how that works. So in order to make this shot work, here's what I want to do. Um, I, I, let, let me actually caveat this too for people who are more experienced with Photoshop. Um, what I am doing is a destructive way of um, implementing this um, effect and there's a much um, more preferred way to do it but it's a little bit more advanced and I don't want to get into the concepts here. I just want to um, kind of cover the idea of layers and this particular technique. So keep that in mind. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that the top layer is selected and what we're going to do is we're going to turn down the opacity. So you can see right up here is the opacity. And you can do that by either A, clicking on the arrow, um, and then clicking the slider and turning it down. Or you can um, go ahead and just click directly into this box and then just reset the values. Um, so I have done that. And as you can see here now, I have um, the shooter that's standing up is um, basically at 30% opacity, um, or transparency, I should say, and 70% um, opaque. So um, I can see through this top layer to see what's below, and, and that's essentially what I want to do. And the reason why I want that is so that I can see where I'm going, going to destroy parts of the um, top layer to reveal what I want to be revealed from the bottom layer. Okay, so I've done that. I can kind of see what I need to do down here. And I want to make sure that I select the eraser tool over here. And the eraser tool is basically just going to destroy um, whatever it is I click on on this top layer. And right now the brush is obviously too big. You can see how large it is. And I can click up here on the triangle and I can adjust that down. 
The other thing about this um, eraser tool is the hardness of the brush. So you have hard brushes and soft brushes. And for this particular um, technique, I want to go ahead and bring my soft brush down to about 20. I'm going to go ahead and just type 20 in there. And I'm going to click back over here. Now, another quicker way to do um, brush sizes, just so you know, is the bracket keys. So the bracket keys are located next to the um, P key. And the one on the left should go ahead and make the bracket smaller. And the one on the right should, or should make the um, brush um, smaller and larger is what I meant. And the one on the right should make it larger. So I'm going to go ahead and go with that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can click on the magnifying glass. And the shortcut is the control plus key or control minus to zoom out. And so I'm going to zoom into about here. And again, I can see part of the bottom layer. Um, coming through because I have my opacity on the top layer set to 70. I'm going to switch back to the um, eraser brush. I'm going to just basically start erasing pieces of the top layer um, where I want the character below to come through. And so you can see as I start to do that, it is all starting to show through. And um, now my actors are not using, um, at least the guy standing up is not using the correct pistol. Again, this is a cheap version of um, recreating that scene. And this one he's using a, um, an LCP um, 380. And I'm going to keep erasing where I want them to come through. see it's all starting to come together and as I erase I'm not paying particular attention to the um, edges and whatnot just because I'm, I'm I'm just showing you the tutorial um, to give you an idea on how this works I'm really not going for the precision that I would normally go um, go for when doing this type of work um, but when you do yours, you know, do it to the level of precision that you're comfortable with. Um, um, I have a tendency to um, try and be a perfectionist about a lot of these things and, and whatnot, so I'm willing to put the time in. But um, I, I also realize that everybody um, is not that way with their work or with um, these types of um, projects. So, Okay, there we go. So... I've got um, this character added to the scene. It looks pretty good. Now the bottom layer is at, if I click on it, you'll see it's at 100% opacity. So it's, it, it's fully showing through the way that it should. And while the top layer is still kind of faded because it is still at 70%. So what do I want to do? I want to go ahead and crank up that opacity so that both characters come into the scene at the... Um, at the same kind of effectiveness so you can see there there we go and if I click the tab key I should be able to get kind of a full view here there you go so that is my um, quick and dirty recreation of um, the Reservoir Dog scene featuring Harvey Keitel and uh, Steve Buscemi um, in that famous scene and uh, where they do the standoff and um, that's basically what you do um, to do that, I encourage you to come up with your own ideas, your own type of things that you might want to do um, with this technique. And um, join me next time for the next vi Photoshop video, and we will continue to do Photoshop awesomeness. And um, I will talk to you later.